Hello everyone, this is Dr. Singaram. Welcome to the NEET PG 2023 recall in pediatrics. This NEET exam uh, was a moderate, uh, moderately tough exam according to the student's recall and pediatrics also had the same difficulty level of the question. We had around 15 questions in pediatrics. Uh, most of the topics were expected and as expected it was the integrated uh, question also like we had many questions from the metabolic disorder integrated with your biochemistry. So questions were in the expected line of course one or two new topics were also asked uh, which would be expected for any NEET PG exam. Okay. So um, before I get started uh, most of these questions are recall questions so you can get a discrepancy between the question or the options uh, so you can have your comments or you can modify the questions or the options in the comment section and also if there are any new more questions which I have left out you can add it in the comment section okay right so let us get started with the first question the first question is a child is being evaluated with muscle weakness or placidity something like those words were given and also has a low IQ or a developmental delay now on evaluation cherry red spots were noted this was one of the important important clues cherry red spots were noted in the macula and there was no hepatosphenomegaly this was a very important important clue in the question okay now whenever there is a cherry red spot mentioned in the question we always tend to think about lysosomal storage disorder so this question was also something related to that and most of the lysosomal storage disorder will have a um, hepatosplenomegaly but students were very clearly saying that there was no hepatosplenomegaly specifically mentioned in the question that brings us to the option um, what do you think so is it Neeman pick Tay Sachs Von Gierke or Gosher it is a case of Tay Sachs disease okay option B is the answer for the question because Neeman pick disease is a lysosomal storage disorder which will have hepatosplenomegaly Von Gierke disease is a glycogen storage disorder which again will have hepatomegaly Gaucher disease again will have hepatosplenomegaly. So very clearly it was mentioned no hepatosplenomegaly with cherry red spot. I will make the diagnosis as Tay-Sachs disease. Now Tay-Sachs disease is one of the GM2 gangliosidosis. Another GM2 gangliosidosis is the Sandhoff disease. But please remember in Sandhoff disease, in Sandhoff disease, there would be hepatosplenomegaly which is present. So that is something which you should note. Okay. Now development uh, coming to the tay sachs disease they are developmentally normal until the first four to six months four to five months of age they will develop normally they will have a normal birth history everything is normal for the first six months then after that only the symptoms will start showing up one of the early early response is uh, early abnormalities is exaggerated startle response to noise which is what we call it as hyper -accuses. This has been already asked in the exam and may be repeated in the future also. So you should make a note of this. Hyperacuse is one of the early, early features of Tay-Sachs disease. Next, they have macrocephaly, but please remember they do not have hydrocephalus. It is macrocephaly without hydrocephalus. That is what you need to remember. And as uh, as been mentioned in the question, they have pallor in the macula along with cherry red spots, which are very, very characteristic of this particular condition. Unfortunately, no treatment is available for Tay-Sachs disease and most of the children succumb to the illness within one to two years of age. So that's about Tay-Sachs disease for the first question. Second question, this is an adolescent who presented the complaints of muscle cramps, particularly during exertion. Now associated findings were lab investigation, which include low lactate and hypoglycemia. Now whenever you have a history like this, muscle weakness, muscle cramps, along with hypoglycemia history, they are making you to think in terms of a metabolic disorder and with a history of low lactate I will think about muscle glycogen storage disorder because uh, glycogen in the muscle is responsible for the production of lactate during exertion okay so during exertion when the, uh, lactate cannot be produced okay it is a feature of muscle glycogen storage disorder that's how you can correlate in this particular question now all the options were also related to metabolic disorder again giving you the clue that they are talking about uh, a metabolic disorder so it has to be a muscle glycogen storage disorder and uh, so many options were given and the best answer for the question is the overall most common muscle glycogen storage disorder what is that it is McArdle's disease okay now last need there was a question about McArdle's disease where they asked about the enzyme deficiency the enzyme deficiency is myophosphorylase deficiency or also called as a muscle phosphorylase deficiency okay this was last year's exam question this time they asked as a case scenario itself okay so this is again a potentially repeatable question in the future also so you should make a note of it 
Okay, moving on to the next, uh, okay, and one more point about this mechardal I wanted to add is, approximately 50% of the patient represent a burgundy colored urine, something like a brownish red colored urine after an exercise or an exertion. This is because of exercise induced myoglobinuria secondary to rhabdomyolysis. This is a very, very potential future question in mechardal disease. You should definitely make a note of it, okay, can be asked in the future. Okay, moving on to the next question. RDS, that is respiratory distress syndrome, is due to deficiency of this substance. We all know about it. It's a very basic question. It is a surfactant deficiency. Surfactant is nothing but a phospholipid. We always say deficiency or immaturity based on the type of the phospholipid which is present. Okay. Mature phospholipid will be deficient. That is what is resulting in RDS. So among the given option, which is the mature phospholipid, it is nothing but lecithin, which is the phosphatidylcholine. So deficiency or immaturity of that will result in RDS, okay. There was one more question about RDS also. Uh, it was actually a repeat question. It is associated with what happens to surface tension, what happens to compliance. You all know it is surfactant deficiency. Surfactant is needed for lowering the surface tension and to improve the lung compliance, okay. So when surfactant is deficient, obviously the surface tension will be increased and the lung compliance will be lowered. Okay, this is a very, very straightforward question. So when the lung compliance is lowered, the amount of stretchability of the lungs is lowered. So the oxygen exchange is impaired and the child will have respiratory distress. This is a repeat question with almost same options repeated again. Okay, moving on to the next question. Which of the following is normal in an infant? This is a question related to anthropometry where you have to growth and anthropometry where you have to analyze these statements and tell which is the correct statement. Anterior fontanel closes by 6 months of age. This is absolutely wrong because we know anterior fontanel closes between 9 to 18 months of age. So that's a wrong statement. 25 centimeter length gain in the first year. Absolutely correct statement and the answer for the question. We all know that in the first year, the length increases by 25 centimeter. In the second year, length increases by 12.5 centimeter. Then after that, there is an increase of 6 centimeter per year. So this is absolutely a correct statement and the answer for the question. Just completion of the other options. 300 gram weight gain in the first 5 months, it is not at all correct because in the first 5 to 6 months, the birth weight actually doubles. So if it is 3 kg, it actually becomes 6 kg. So that's a wrong statement. Ideal length is not um, between 25th and 75th percentile. Okay, that is a wrong statement. The normal value of the length according to the WHO chart will be between third and 97th percentile as we have discussed so many times in the WHO chart. So that's also a wrong statement. So answer for this is option B. Moving on to the next question. It was an image based question. Very straightforward question. Identify the vitamin deficiency characterized by this leg abnormality. It's a very classical bowing of the legs or what we call it as a geno virus deformity which is a characteristic feature of rickets which is vitamin D deficiency. It was a very straightforward and a simple question. Um, this year in a foreign medical graduate screening exam also, uh, there was a picture which was about genu valgus, which is again a feature of rickets or vitamin D deficiency that was asked this time in the FMG exam. Okay, moving on to the next question. In a child presenting with a bone pain and anemia, bone marrow aspiration was done, which reveals crumpled tissue paper appearance on microscopy. Which enzyme deficiency is associated with this condition? Very, very straightforward question, especially when they give you the feature of crumpled tissue paper appearance. Okay, this is very, very characteristic of which condition? Yes, it is Gaucher's disease. Okay, and Gaucher's disease is the most common lysosomal storage disorder due to deficiency of the enzyme glucocerebrosidase. Multiple enzymes were given in the option. So answer is glucocerebrosidase deficiency. So the glucocerebrosides will start accumulating. Okay, when they accumulate in the bone marrow, they will cause bone pain. They will cause anemia. Even they will cause decrease in the other cell line like WBC and platelet or in other words, it can be associated with thrombocytopenia also. And one more characteristic feature is if you take the X-ray of the long bones, you get a characteristic flash shaped deformity, something like this flash shaped deformity at the end of the long bone called Erlen Mayer flask deformity. Erlen Mayer flask deformity. 
this is again a repeat question from the last year's NEET PG where they asked straightforward about the enzyme deficiency in Gauchers. That was a straightforward question. This time they modified into a case scenario. Okay, right. So very well possible it can be repeated in the future also. It's a very, very important topic. Okay, moving on to the next one. A one-year-old girl is presenting with recurrent episodes of fasting hypoglycemia. Liver biopsy reveals no or minimal glycogen deposits. Which enzyme deficiency is associated with this condition? Okay. Now, recurrent episodes of fasting hypoglycemia, possibilities are so much. Only thing is that it's, it could be a long-standing condition. It's not an acute condition because there are recurrent episodes of fasting hypoglycemia. Now, fasting hypoglycemia would give you a clue to a metabolic problem. Okay, because this hypoglycemia is not random. It is only during periods of fasting or starvation like that. Okay, so this is a clue towards a metabolic disorder. Second clue towards the metabolic disorder is look at the enzyme names. All these branching enzyme, debranching enzyme, glycogen synthase, glucose 6-phosphatase are all related to glycogen metabolism. Glycogen metabolism. So, now I think you can think in terms of which group of metabolic disorders. Yes, it is glycogen storage disorders okay in fact all the enzyme deficiencies can be associated with some form of the other glycogen storage disorders so answer is going to come from the second line of the question which is liver biopsy reveals no or minimal glycogen deposit this is straightforward line which will tell you the answer okay what is the answer it is glycogen synthase deficiency simple way to remember is glycogen synthase is needed for production of glycogen so, when the production of glycogen is affected, there won't be any glycogen deposits at all in the liver. Very simple. And this condition characterized by glycogen synthase deficiency is a disorder called GST type 0. GST type 0. Liver glycogen synthase deficiency. Now, we all know characteristic feature of glycogen storage disorder, especially in talking about liver glycogen storage disorder is recurrent episodes of fasting hypoglycemia because or early morning hypoglycemia because during fasting glycogen has to be converted to glucose which is not happening in this particular condition okay now clinically how it is differentiated from the other glycogen liver glycogen storage disorder we know the most common liver glycogen storage disorder is a type 1 or the von Gerke disease now in comparison with the type 1 this particular type that is GST type 0 will not have any hyperlipidemia will not have any hepatomegaly Whereas in glycogen storage disorder type 1, which is the most common or the von Gerke disease, there will be hyperlipidemia and there will be hepatomegaly. This is how we clinically differentiate or based on the features we can differentiate between the two conditions. Okay. Now, this is an exact line from Nelson textbook of pediatrics, which very clearly says that GSD type 0 by itself is very, very rare in the humans. And this is in a true sense is not even glycogen storage disorder because glycogen is not even produced because deficiency of the enzyme will result in decreased glycogen store in the liver because glycogen is not even produced and exactly that was what was given in the stem of the question okay so the answer is gsd type 0 with liver glycogen synthase deficiency moving on there were two questions straightforward question about torch every year i keep saying this that we get questions about torch infection usually it's a statement based question but very very fortunate this time it was a straightforward question where one question was about uh, triad itself of cataract, deafness and PDA. What is the torch infection? Very, very clear. It's a congenital rubella syndrome. Second question was also like a case scenario, but there were so many clues given in the question. Like baby with sensor neural hearing loss, petechiae, jaundice, hepatosplenomegaly, periventricular calcification. This is something which has been emphasized so many times in the classes. And urine shows, aula inclusion, okay, right, where correlation with microbiology. What is the condition? It is very, very characteristic. CMV, congenital CMV infection. There were two direct questions from Torch. So many clues were given that I think none of you would have gone wrong in this type of questions. Okay, right. Next, an image-based question. This is a two-month-old baby with a swelling which has been present since birth. This is an important clue. It is something which is since birth. What is the diagnosis? They straight away gave the um, X-ray picture. Okay, right. Now, you can see in this particular uh, picture, this is the location of the swelling, correct? This is the location of the swelling, okay? What you can see, it is a localized swelling. It is a localized swelling. So, two options are already out. What are they? Caput succedaneum is out. Subgallial hematoma is also out because both of them are diffuse swelling. 
and also caput succinium will resolve within few days two to three days itself it will resolve it is not going to be persistent for a uh, two month old baby so those two options are automatically out encephalocele and cephalematoma can persist up to two months also encephalocele for a even longer duration also how will you differentiate between the condition both are localized ones but the point to be noted is encephalocele on an x-ray will be like this where you will have typically a defect a defect in the skull through which the brain tissue protrudes out that's why it's called encephalocele encephal means the brain seal means the cavity and that is due to a defect in the skull so you will have a very clear defect in the skull which was not at all given in the question so that option is also out now that brings us to the answer which is cephalhematoma okay so the answer for this particular question is cephalhematoma okay okay so cephalhematoma appears late and also resolves late it can be for few weeks to few months exactly as what is given in the particular question okay right Moving on to the next question, it was a very straightforward question. Even this time in the FMG exam also, they asked the same question. Defect in the collagen synthesis is associated with which condition? Very straightforward. It is scurvy, which is due to vitamin C deficiency. So I felt that as I was going through the question, so many questions were asked about the um, vitamin deficiencies as well as metabolic disorders in the pediatric section. Okay, right. Moving on to the next question, which was a relatively new question because they specifically mentioned about ISPAD guideline. What is ISPAD guideline? It is International Society for Pediatric and Adolescent Diabetes Guidelines. Okay, fine. Now, this is a child with a history suggest of uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. Okay, something like acidotic, rapid deep breathing like that in a child with a known history of type 1 diabetes. Something like that was the stem of the question and you had the findings on the lab findings which includes pH of 7 which is acidosis, bicarbonate of 7 which is low, glycosuria is present and very high glucose of 550. So typically it is fitting into the diagnosis of diabetic ketoacidosis. Now the question was regarding management of DKA. Okay, of course the first management will always always be ABC, uh, initial ABC, right, airway, breathing and circulation. And this question also mentioned child had features of shock. This is something like a very deciding point in the question because depending on the level of dehydration or if the child has shock we will manage accordingly okay so anyway first part is very clear abc right for any child with an emergency you have to stabilize airway breathing and circulation now the next two things which needs to be answered are how much is the fluid we will give whether it will be 10 ml per kg fluid or 20 ml per kg of fluid bolus second whether you will start insulin immediately or you will start insulin after one hour can you see these two options um, it was written like after one hour, whether you will start immediately or after one hour. Okay. First thing to note, because this child is having shock, the amount of fluid to be given is 20 ml per kg. Okay. That is a fluid bolus. First that has to be given. You should not give immediately insulin. Insulin is given later after one hour of fluid therapy. That is the important thing. So the answer for the question is the last option. You do the ABC, stabilization of the child, followed by 20 ml per kg of fluid and insulin later after one hour. This is what is the guideline I was talking about. You can see that this is the same ISPAD guidelines. You can see clinical history, science and biochemical investigation should be proving that it's a case of DKA. It was all satisfied in our child. So we had DKA diagnosis confirmed. Then you look at the three limbs. What are the three limbs? Whether it's a uh, shock, first situation, second moderate or greater dehydration or severe dehydration third minimal dehydration okay right very simple minimal dehydration means child will be able to take oral fluids that's all in moderate or great dehydration child will have severe features like acidotic breathing will be there vomiting will be there but not in shock this is important third will be in shock okay which is what is given in our question itself child was in shock now you look at this for further discussion what is that if the child is in shock you have to stabilize the airway breathing and circulation and can you see how much is the fluid given 0.9 saline which is normal saline 20 ml per kg bolus has to be given okay right so it's a very straightforward question once you are given the fluid you can see the second limb the second limb is where you have to give iv insulin infusion starting one hour after iv fluids are initiated so that is why the answer for this question is after stabilization ABC, 
give 20 ml per kg of fluid bolus then after one hour give IV insulin okay so this is a question straight taken from ISPAD guidelines a relatively new question maybe for future you have to know this topic very properly then this is one more question okay relatively uh, new pattern question but something which we have studied as a fact based question in the previous year exams but this time it was a image based question and a clinical scenario based question right a three month old baby with a history of raw egg ingestion this was the important clue okay raw egg ingestion has following features with something like thinning of the hair some of the students said that child had alloplesia something like that and this child also has this uh, erythematous that is red colored scaly lesions scaly lesion something which would look like an uh, seborrheic dermatitis itself okay right this is one characteristic feature of this condition along with that child is also having alloplesia and most important clue in this is raw egg ingestion okay and now you have to correlate uh, with what deficiency the features would have been occurred is it vitamin a vitamin c zinc or biotin deficiency the answer is biotin deficiency because raw egg ingestion see raw egg especially the egg white contains lot of this biotin biotin which will uh, i'm sorry for that raw egg especially the egg white will contain lot of this avidin this avidin will interfere with the biotin absorption from the intestine okay when the biotin absorption is interfered it would lead to biotin deficiency which will typically manifest as two important important finding one is the hair changes where the child will have frank alloplesia or thinning of the hair second there would be erythematous scaly lesions in the scalp which would look like a seborrheic dermatitis like what is given in the picture or they would have peri orificial dermatitis peri dermatitis something like uh, surrounding the orifices like mouth anal opening gentle opening like that okay right so most important clue in this question would be raw egg ingestion that is what made me think about biotin deficiency okay now biotin is such an important substance which you should know about because biotin is actually something like a cofactor for carboxylases which are involved in almost every metabolism like carbohydrate metabolism fat metabolism as well as amino acid metabolism so it is very very important and the risk factors is consumption of raw egg i've already told you the uh, reason raw egg contain the egg white contains is avidin which will interfere with the biotin absorption one more important important risk factor found to be is long term valproate drug therapy that is also associated with biotin deficiency one of your future mcq questions so please make a note of it okay and characteristic features i already told you two things one is the hair in the form of alloplesia second skin in the form of dermatitis they can have conjunctivitis also one more it involves the nervous system so it is associated with hypotonia as well as decreased activity in the child okay these are all characteristic features of biotin deficiency okay then there were other straightforward questions also i did not get the complete stem of the question as well as the full option so i just straight away put it up one was very straightforward usually repeated question sweat chloride test is done for which condition it is cystic fibrosis straightforward question second one was related to uh, a child with features of pneumonia uh, in the um, community setting or the home setting what drug you will use for the management it is amoxicillin please remember if the question was mentioning about features of severe pneumonia then the drug you have to start would be third generation cephalosporin like ceftriaxone okay right so depending on what was the actual question your answer may vary this is what most of the students said so i am putting it up the last one was coplic spots a very very important and repeatedly asked question which is associated with measles infection so that's about uh, my uh, discussion of recall questions in pediatrics if you have any comments regarding the uh, stem of the question or the options please put it up in the comment section below or if you have entirely new question which is not discussed in this uh, in this video you can also put it up in the comment section i hope you liked uh, this particular video please share with your friends also and subscribe to the channel for any and, and also uh, press the bell icon for any new uh, videos which will be posted in future i wish you all the best for the results Thank you.